Hello everyone, Rose Pants here, back with another episode highlighting a third chapter of the pot book, which is a complete guide to cannabis. This chapter in specific this week that we're doing is chapter 8, starting on page 73, and it is Cannabis Laws in the United States. This chapter in specific is written by Alan St. Pierre, since that is one of the most amazing parts about the pot book, is that it is edited by Julie Holland herself, but then compilations from a wide variety of different people within the cannabis industry, medical industry, everything, putting together this compilation. So Alan St. Pierre is the director of Normal, and this chapter discussing cannabis laws in the United States does preface in bold that this chapter in specific was updated May 14th, 2010, and that from here forward you should reference normal.org for ongoing updates to cannabis laws specifically in the United States. Even before getting into specific laws, our government data indicates that nearly 30 million citizens smoke cannabis annually, and throughout recent history, cannabis has been one of what they call, the, it ranks as the top five domestic cash crops in the United States. So even with it being federally legal, people are still using it in massive amounts and it is a huge cash crop. Unfortunately, at this moment, we do kind of have a patchwork system for cannabis laws. It's going to differentiate between city, state, and federal law. There's going to be three different levels that you kind of have to pay attention to. On page 73, he mentions whether an individual caught by law enforcement with a small amount of cannabis will be treated lightly with a small civil fine or arrested and pulled into the criminal justice system. It depends largely upon one factor. Can you guess? Geography. This chapter in specific utilizes a great example of the different cannabis laws and how much they differentiate between each other, where it's a situation where if someone were to take a cross-country road trip starting from Portland, Maine, and then driving all the way across the United States and ending in Portland, Oregon. Portland, Maine and Portland, Oregon, they both are decriminalized. They have been decriminalized since the 70s. So it's essentially a slap on the wrist or a small fine if you're caught with cannabis. However, if you are driving across country, you are going to be passing through a few states that have very, very harsh cannabis laws in comparison. And so, I mean, in this example specifically, you're going to be passing through Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Utah, South Dakota, or Idaho, and cannabis possessing criminals would be readily arrested and prosecuted and face potential incarceration of up to two years. And that's according to page 74 here in the pop-up. Now again, this book in specific was published in 2010, so some things have been updated, and so when I go and read the facts straight from this book, I am going to include the updated information since in the past three years, cannabis has made some really, really huge, huge improvements in our fight towards legalization. When this book was published in 2010, there were 13 states that had decriminalized cannabis, and it made up to one third of the entire United States population within these states. Since 2010, three additional states have decriminalized cannabis in their statewide. I mean, it's more than one third believe that it should not be a serious crime. These states do include Alaska, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Mississippi, Nebraska, Nevada, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, and Oregon. The three states that have come in since are Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Vermont. They go on to say that additionally, as of 2010, 14 states have medical marijuana systems set up, so it's besides just cannabis in general, possession and all of that, it's not a great crime, but they're going to encapsulate a whole nother medical marijuana system where they do recognize medical benefits of cannabis. These states include Alaska, California, Colorado, 
Colorado, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington, and the District of Columbia. So those were all done through binding voter initiatives, and then as well, Hawaii, Rhode Island, and Vermont were done strictly through legislation. Now, of course, we do have some updates since 2010. Arizona, Connecticut, Delaware, and Massachusetts all passed their own statewide medical marijuana. And then, of course, the biggest and like most thing to be proud of is that Colorado and Washington both have really passed legalization in general for cannabis. Unfortunately, even with all that good news and the longer lists, like more states are coming to their senses and bringing on decriminalization and bringing on medical marijuana. Unfortunately, we still have so many people every day getting arrested. According to page 75 of the pop book, historically, the top five states for all cannabis arrests are California, New York, Texas, Illinois, and Georgia. And the top five states for cannabis arrests per capita in 2002 specifically were Nebraska, Louisiana, Wyoming, Kentucky, and Illinois. So definitely, if you guys are in those states, you need to keep up and really fight because this is a place where people are continuously getting arrested for something that in my mind, and probably your mind as well, that they don't deserve to be arrested for. It's a waste of resources in so many ways. Speaking of a waste of resources, again on page 75, a 2005 economics paper by a Harvard professor, Jeffrey Miron, indicates that the federal and state governments annually spend $8 billion trying to enforce cannabis prohibition laws in the United States. I don't know if you caught that, so I'll say it again. $8 billion, with a B, like they're not spending millions of dollars on trying to keep cannabis under wraps and keep up this charade of reefer madness, they are taking to the extreme and spending billions of dollars on this. The wonderful part about this chapter of the pot book, chapter eight, discussing cannabis laws in the United States, is that it does go through individually each state, starting with Alabama and ending with Wyoming. It gives you the specific cannabis laws and if it's decriminalized, if it's a medical marijuana state, and what all the penalties and fines and how they're defined. So unfortunately, I don't have the time to go through every state specifically. That would just make this video way too long. But regardless, we are all under the umbrella federal government and their laws, regardless of state decriminalization or medical marijuana systems. The federal law is the one that trumps everything. So I am going to discuss that in general because it affects us all. On page 86, it says that possession of marijuana is punishable by up to one year in jail and a minimum fine of $1,000 for a first conviction. So that's just straight up possession. Like you get caught smoking by a cop, they come up to you and they're going to want to prosecute you in some way. There are going to be harsher laws revolving around the distribution of cannabis. And again, on page 86, they say that manufacture distribu distribution of less than 50 kilograms of marijuana is punishable by up to five years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. For 50 kilograms or more, the penalty increases to a possible 20 years in prison and a fine of up to $1 million. So those are the basics to our federal laws against cannabis. As of now, it's still a Schedule One drug where they consider it's a substance that currently has no accepted medical use and treatment in the United States. So no matter where you are, unfortunately, federally, that is where we're at. But I encourage you so much to look into your specific cannabis laws, whether you're in the United States or if you're watching this outside of the United States up. Become more comfortable with your specific cannabis laws and how they're going to affect you. And then also look into the ways for how you can fight for decriminalization if you don't have that in your state. Fight for a medical marijuana system in your state if you don't have that. Fight for legalization in general because that is the path that we are on 
and I truly believe that eventually we will all get there. As always, let's end the episode by feeding our endocannabinoid system. We fed our brains with cannabis knowledge, so let's reward the rest of our bodies. Join me next week where I'm going to be discussing chapter nine of the pot book, rounding out part one of this incredible compilation. Part one is the overview of cannabis. So chapter nine is going to be on ending prohibition. I'll see you guys next time.